Leia here from LeiaFirstSight.com. In this video, we'll discuss the what and how behind the alkene reaction mechanisms. I will take you through the hydrohalogenation alkene reaction mechanism. Hydrohalogenation simply means adding HX to an alkene or to a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. Whenever you see X in organic chemistry, this is a halogen or a halide, and it represents the atoms fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. We'll start the explanation of this mechanism using a very simple and symmetrical molecule, 2-butene, and react it with HX without specifying what X is. HX is a polar molecule composed of a halogen which is highly electronegative. The halogen draws electron density away from the hydrogen, making it partially negative. The hydrogen, having the electrons pulled away from it, has a partially exposed nucleus which makes it partially positive. The partially positive hydrogen acts as the electrophile in this reaction, and the negative pi electrons on the alkene makes this the nucleophile for the reaction. The mechanism begins with the nucleophilic pi electrons reaching for the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen can only have one bond, so when it is grabbed by the nucleophilic electrons, the electrons that hold hydrogen to the halogen collapse and wind up on the halogen, breaking the molecule. What I get now is my butene now as a butane, and the hydrogen randomly placed on one of the two carbons that initially held a double bond, the other one getting a positive charge. The X had started out with three lone pair of electrons, now gets a fourth lone pair giving it a complete octet and a formal charge of negative one. The halogen with its negative extra pair of electrons comes back and attacks the carbocation to give me my final product, which is a halogenated alkane or an alkyl halide. And this is a very simple way of explaining how these things react and what the product will look like. I haven't taken into account stereochemistry or what would happen with an asymmetrical molecule. So let's take a look at that next. If I start my reaction with an asymmetrical molecule, and this time we'll use a specific example HBr. The way the halogen adds to the molecule is going to be regioselective. Regioselectivity, as the word implies, is very selective of the region in which it adds. That means that the intermediate will have some determining factor telling you where to place the halogen and why you place the halogen there. So let's take a look. The pi electrons will reach out and grab the partially positive hydrogen, causing the electrons holding the hydrogen to bromine to collapse onto bromine. I have two options now with how I form my intermediate. I have a propane molecule for each one, but the question is, do I put the hydrogen on the end, giving me a carbocation in the middle, or do I put the hydrogen in the middle, giving me a carbocation on the end? Some of you will memorize that, yes, the hydrogen goes to the less substituted carbon or that the rich get richer, meaning the carbon that has more hydrogens gets the extra hydrogens. I like to think of it in terms of stability. The first carbocation shown is a secondary carbocation. The second one I have is a primary carbocation. Primary carbocations have very little support for that positive charge Therefore, they are very unstable and not likely to happen. A secondary carbocation is stabilized by having two neighboring R groups and therefore is a lot more likely to happen. That means for this intermediate, I will form the secondary carbocation. For the intermediates of this reaction, my electrophile is the carbocation, given that it's positive and looking to attract electrons and my bromide ion is the nucleophile, given that it's negative, looking to attack something positive. Bromine will use its extra pair of electrons to attack the carbocation. This will give me a product that has bromine on the central carbon. 
Had I carried on with my primary carbocation, I would have wound up with a primary alkyl halide, and this would be considered the minor or the not formed product. Another way you can look at this is the product formed is considered the Markovnikov product, and the product that is not formed is considered the anti-Markovnikov product. This is because Markovnikov's rule says that you form the product that is the direct result of the more stable intermediate. Since the secondary carbocation is more stable, the product shown is a result of the secondary carbocation. The examples you see on exams might not look exactly how I showed you, but if you can ask yourself, what is the nucleophile, what is the electrophile, where does it attack, you'll be able to come up with a solution despite not having seen this. Let's try another example. This time I'll start with a substituted cyclohexene reacting with HCl. Let's analyze the starting material quickly. We have a pi bond located partly on a secondary carbon and partly on a tertiary carbon. We know that the tertiary carbocation is going to be more stable. So without even going through the mechanism, I can guess that my product will have the chlorine added to the tertiary carbon. But let's prove that with a mechanism. The pi electrons will reach out and grab the partially positive hydrogen, causing the electrons to collapse onto chlorine. My intermediate has two options for carbocation placement. I can place my hydrogen in the tertiary position and carbocation in the secondary position, or place the hydrogen secondary and the carbocation tertiary. As we said before, the secondary carbocation is less stable, and the tertiary carbocation is the one that forms. Chloride will then come and attack the carbocation with its extra lone pair of electrons and give me the product that we expected based on understanding the mechanism rather than memorizing the answer. I will squeeze in one last example. For our final example, we'll start with a cyclopentane that has a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond coming off the ring, reacting with hydrogen iodine. A quick analysis of the double bond shows me a primary carbon and a tertiary carbon, therefore we expect that the iodine will add to the tertiary position. Going through the mechanism, the pi electrons will reach out and grab the hydrogen, causing the bond between hydrogen and iodine to collapse as a lone pair onto iodine. My intermediate will be the more stable carbocation forming on the tertiary position and the negative iodide forming in solution. The iodide will come and attack the carbocation and give me the expected final product of a tertiary iodine. I will be happy to answer any additional mechanism questions in my weekly review sessions, live, online, and from the comfort of your home. I also offer one-on-one -on -one private tutoring. Visit my website for more information. Leafirstside.com slash organic chemistry.